Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing financial crime and compliance. And with us today is Scott Simon from PwC and Simon Richardson from Oracle. So you were talking a few moments ago, you were mentioning AI and machine learning mm -hmm. and robotics. Um, how are financial services or how are institutions currently operationalizing these kinds of technologies mm -hmm. to, um, uh, to in and integrating them into the uh, uh, compliance process? I think it's probably interesting from, from two aspects. One is how do you explain what's going on? So a lot of people see AI as a black box. So how do you actually allow that information to be visualized and actually seen by people? So you can explain it to whether it's a third party or regulator, what you're doing and why it's better than potentially a rules-based system. On the other side, I think it's, it's making sure you have the right analytics in place for the problem you've got. So there's lots of different things, whether it's graph databases, whether it's machine learning, whether it's RPA or IPA, there's a number of different tools out there. But I think the key thing is actually understanding your business to actually make sure you're applying the right things to actually describe the risk in the right way. So we're seeing a lot of time where people are taking a step back and saying, if we get our data, both internal data and external data, how can we work out the right set of analytics to run on that data to actually unearth the risk and better manage the risk within the bank? Because to me, what that means is you're making the right selection of tools rather than saying, actually, I'm going to go and buy something, but you don't know how to apply it. So you're trying to actually build the business case based on you know, building models or analytics that allow you to actually describe the risk. No, I completely agree. And I think the challenge uh, for financial institutions is being able to take these technologies, which you might think of as uh, maybe a data science toolkit, uh, and apply them in a practical way to their compliance uh, processes. Uh, and I think to really drive value from these technologies, that, that, that's what you need to do. You, you need to be able to, uh, to, to think uh, about how each of these technology components can be used to complement uh, and evolve uh, the way that, that, that your compliance teams are working. And if you can do that in a transparent way, that's easy to articulate internally and externally, uh, then uh, that, that's where you can really drive s some innovation uh, in I, compliance. I think the other, the other challenge that I'm seeing is how do you potentially change the way you're working based on what's available to you from data and analytics toolbox point of view? Now, is, is that the ability to actually combine fraud monitoring with AML monitoring? Is it the ability to actually say we've got KYC happening over here and we've got transaction monitoring over here? What happens if we put those together? Do we have better risk coverage? Mm -hmm. Do we manage the risk? Does that reduce our false positives? So I think there's a, a number of different things from probably a risk point of view and how you're going to manage your risk, which needs to come into these thoughts as well, and how technology and analytics will enable that. So, so I think that for us seems to be a, the um, catalyst to driving contextualized learning, right? And contextualized use case management or, or contextualized analysis, yep. right? And you continue to see that in, in other institutions as well? I think I continue seeing in terms of contextualized risk. And it's, I think as I touched on before, it's, it's very much looking at what data is available to you. So what data and what intelligence can you gather from that, both internal and external? Um, probably one of the examples is if you're a corporate and that corporate's got his registered address, how many other corporates, how many other corporates have registered that address? Because that's a good piece of risk information, but it's right. not something people were leveraging two, three years ago. But that describes the context of that customer in a lot more detail. Um, yeah, that, that brings in things like graph analytics, and it brings in other techniques that you want to use to actually prove that. So I, I do see it's more context either around the customer and the type of customer or around the products. You know, one, one, one of the areas that a lot of organisations struggle around is these things like trade finance. So how do you understand the trade finance flow and better look at the risks during that flow and when it happens? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think the power uh, of these new technologies is being able to automate uh, that contextualisation, whether that's data gathering with, uh, uh, with RPA or, or, or using graph to build those dynamic pictures of your corporate entities and, and how they're transacting. Uh, and the difference that that makes is, is really significant, uh, I think, because getting these insights has historically been a labour-intensive manual process, whereas now it, it can be automated in an intuitive uh, and visual way, which is really a step change in how uh, your, your compliance teams can understand your risk and what your customers are doing. So if we're approaching things differently, if we're using technology in a different way, does it change the type of role or individuals that are now engaged in compliance? 
I, th I think it does. What, what I've seen in industries probably over the last five years, you've had a, a combination of different people coming together, um, which has probably then led to a hybrid. You've had people from law enforcement. You've had data analytics people who potentially both of those areas don't have banking experience. And it yeah. started to evolve in terms of bringing those big people together and get them to learn off of each other as well as the banking community because that allows you to actually understand the risks. And I think that's the key thing. Where are the risks and where the intelligence and taking those two things and putting them together. So essentially you've got people who know about you know, how to do investigations from, from law enforcement. And then you've got people who know how to do analytics and all different analytical techniques. Then you need to bring that banking knowledge in as well, so the people who know about how, how certain products work, how certain types of customers work. How do you combine all those you know, to actually right. find out where your risk is and the best sort of tools and technology to apply, essentially? Right. And uh, on a practical level, I think the investigator's experience is changing uh, dramatically now. Uh, when you look historically, you'll see all sorts of industry surveys showing that 50% or more of an investigator's time is spent on manual tasks. Maybe only 20% of your time is spent actually on analysis. Uh, and, and when you think about the subject matter expertise you have in your team, whether that's from, from law enforcement, the regulatory environment or elsewhere, if you're using those resources or on the low value tasks, you're not really getting the full value uh, from them. So being able to use some of these new capabilities to refocus people and give them the chance to really add value by applying their subject matter expertise where it counts, uh, that's a, a, a way that you can really get a new understanding in your risk uh, and be far more effective in the way that you approach compliance. Yeah, and Simon, the other thing that I find is, is that communication between those different parties to making sure you're getting the feedback. So yeah. what an investigator actually sees and finds around a set of cases, how does that get fed back to someone who does the analytics or someone who understands the products? So I think there's a, a key thing there is not just a set of tools, but how do you communicate better within your organisation to understand the risks? Right. Scott, Simon, thank you both very much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, a pleasure. Um, financial crime and compliance. It's a topic the PwC and Oracle have been working on for quite some time. We look forward to talking to you about it. Thank you very much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.